Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Makalesi, and today I just want to go ahead and um, talk a little bit more about the fourth dimension, because a lot of times when I, I hear a lot of the people talking about the fourth dimension, and you know, some people are even going as far as saying we're in the fifth dimension now, and things of that perspective, and I thought it would be a really good idea to show you how um, we really are actually in the third dimension, just to go ahead and ground us, but at the same time realize that from the fourth dimension, things are going to be, the perception of reality would be a lot different from our perception that is now and if you're basically uh, looking at things from a third dimensional perspective life would be basically the same where when you're looking at things from a fourth dimensional perception and you're looking down as then that's third dimension or before you actually get in the third dimension there is a, a big difference between the third and the fourth dimension as well as that there would be something a little bit different from the third and fifth dimension, um, just as it would be a difference from the first and the second dimension. So just go ahead to just start off real quick. So here I have, uh, this is a point, it's, it's a point is a zero dimensions. It's a zero dimension topical space. It's topical space that has zero dimensions. It's just a pot, it's just a dot. Um, so when you're thinking of a dot, this is basically nothing. It's just a point. A point of reference. So what happens is when you start to have um, one dimension, what you do is you take two points. So if you look at there's one black point on the left, and then there's a black point on the right, and there's a red line connecting two points. So when you connect those two points together, you're adding length, and that is basically one dimension. So I have here one dimension connects two zero points together. From the zero points perspective, this would seem like an amazing concept, being able to connect two points at the same time. So what happens is, you know, when you, the two points, like some of that can go from like one line to another line, that's like kind of like going parallel to a point, and it would be like a miraculous thing from the, the zero point perspective. How did you move from one point to one point? I didn't even know there was a different point. I didn't know that there was length. So that would be like a new trailblazing idea to a zero point. So when you have a length that acts, a that acts like a dimension, so I have here like there's an arrow going to the right and I have underneath it, one dimension means something has a length, um, but no width or height. A one dimensional object has no thickness at all, only length. So realizing like basically there's no thickness, there's no nothing, it's just a concept of length. So to go ahead, before we go ahead and explain the second dimension, we're gonna. I'm gonna put it here and show you guys now. I'm gonna just take the same concept I had here with the one dimension, and I'm just gonna make it parallel to each other. So now I have a, a dimension going from the top, oh, and a one dimension going on the bottom. Now, the, the, but these are basically two one dimensions, and I have here on the bottom. These are two one dimensions who are parallel to each other and are unaware of each other. They both have length and nothing else. However, on the second dimension, we can connect them via height, adding width and height. So now we have two points. So basically, on the one, you have one point can go to the second point through a line, and you have a parallel that doesn't even know about each other that can go from one point to one point, and that's all they know. And it's just a line. But when you have the second dimension, now you're adding a square. And what happens is on the second dimension, you can add those two one points together. So I have here on the second dimension has height and length connecting the four points. The two, dimensional, two dimensions are commonly called length and width. Both directions lie in the same plane. So here I have the two one dimensions of red are red on top, one on top, one on bottom. And now what happens is with the two dimension, I can go ahead and connect it with the blue arrow. Now if there was only someone that was one dimensional and the two dimensional person was able to jump from their dimension to the second, the, you know, one dimension and then jump to the second dimension, which is parallel, the one dimensional person that only understands length would understand, would not understand the concept of height because they're just like, I just know point A to point B. How did you jump? And then the second dimensional person say, oh, well, what that's called is that is called height. But what would happen is they would understand that 
So here I have a better example. So basically, when you look at the second dimension, you're looking at length and height. Now, like I was saying, the first row, which is red, and the, the, the on the top, and there's a row on the bottom, those are both one-dimensional concepts. So they wouldn't understand how you can go from one dimension to the other dimension through height because they only understand length. But on the second dimension perception, you can understand connecting those two through height. So then you have length and height. So commonly, when you're thinking of a one dimension, you're just thinking of a line. When you're thinking of zero point, you're just thinking of a point. And when you're thinking of a second dimension, you're thinking of length and height. Therefore, when a lot of times people think of a second dimension, they're primarily thinking of something like a piece of paper. So when you look at something on a piece of paper, that's something like a second dimension. So let's just say I drew a person on a second dimension paper, or one piece of paper, and then... Um, that's basically all the person experiences is like that paper. So on the third dimension, we can have like maybe three or four pieces of paper, which is like three or four two-dimensional aspects of drawings, and the piece of paper concept wouldn't wouldn't really understand that. So then we're gonna go into the third dimension. But before I go with that, I'm gonna go ahead and read this. It says the dotted lines. The dot blue lines is a representation of height, which the second dimension is connecting the two one dimensions length. But when you look at it all together, you know, we're not going to look at two one, di one dimensions together. All together, it's called two dimensions. So this is basically how um, a two dimensional concept looks like. It looks like just like a square. And they don't have uh, what you would call the third dimension width, so every to, to them is two-dimensional. So like a drawing, a cartoon, even this drawing right here is just two-dimensional. So here I have two-dimensional squares and let's just say they don't really know about each other and if I was to add uh, width to it, because width is third dimension, then you can see like the two pieces of paper which are red or the two dimensions now have width. So usually, you know, from a uh, a third dimensional perception which we're at and when you see a piece of paper a piece of paper even is an analogy I use but even a piece of paper has width to it if you hold it to the side you can see that there's width to it so technically a uh, piece of paper is three-dimensional but the concept of analogy I just like to use a, a piece of paper for like if you draw a stick person that stick person would be uh, more like a two-dimensional concept now if you're going to measure the width of the ink, you can still say technically in a minute level it's third dimensional, but you get the idea. So when we're dealing with one dimensions, we're thinking of a line. When we're thinking of two dimensions, we're thinking of a square. And then when we're thinking of a third dimension, we're thinking more what length, one dimension, height and width, width, width which is two dimension, height, width, Right. Length, height, and width is third dimension. So here, you, when you get into the third dimension, you're more thinking about a cube, something that looks like a cube. So I have here, now you can connect the two dimensions, height and width, by adding width. From the two-dimensional perspective, they would not be able to comprehend the concept of attaching two separate dimensions via width. But on the third dimension, we can see it. So what happens is, when you're dealing with things that are on third dimension, it, it looks like this. There's two widths, and then basically there's different sides. But I like this picture better because this shows you on like, like you know, when you look at the dotted lines, that's us saying hypothetically we can look behind the cube. But technically, we can't really see through a cube. So when we're looking at a cube, the solid line is basically something that's visible to our naked eye. The uh, this dotted lines right here in the back is basically basically saying if we could hypothetically look through the cube, we can see those dotted lines. But technically, when you're thinking of a third dimension, it looks like this. There's, there's cubes, and basically all we can see is the three corners, is three dimensionals. We can kind of estimate the width, the height, the length of it. Now, if we have something to compare it to, we can compare, we can compare it through um, observation, the height and width of it, to maybe like something like a like a marble or something like a dice. You can see if it's a big cube or a small cube. But basically in the third dimensions, we can kind of see things from width, height, and depth.
So now let's go on to the fourth dimension. So with the fourth dimension, what you're doing is you're taking something like the, these two cubes, and then you're going to have to um, put them together. Because if you're realizing what's happening is you're taking like the old, it kind of builds up on the old, the old dimension. So you'll take one dimension, which is one. You'll take a dot, which is zero point, and then you pay, take two dots, line it up, that's one dimension, right? And you take two one dimensions, line them up, then that would be two dimensions. And then you take two dimensions, line them up, and then that would be three dimensions. If you see my thought, I, I, that's what we're doing. So what happens is with the fourth dimension, you have to take two cubes, line them up, and then can, can add the corners, and then that makes a fourth dimension. So if we were to take these th two cubes now, put them together and then line them up, you would get something that looks like this. So here on the left, I to make it easier for you, I have here a red cube in the front and I put a blue cube in the back and I put the green lines to show you where they're connecting. And this is basically the concept of the fourth dimension which people have said is a concept of time. And I'll go ahead and illustrate that. So basically when you have two parallel cubes from the third dimension connected together, and then you have, um, and then there, there's a connection to those two cubes. Then you have the hypercube, or what you can call the fourth dimension. So if you look at this picture I have here, you know, I have the concept of uh, height, width, length, which is the third dimension. And then I went ahead and include the yellow arrow, which means time. So basically, when you're looking, thinking about it, um, on the fourth dimension, you know, they kind of see the connection be between the past, the present moment, and the future. So everything kind of happens simultaneously. Now, from our perspective, that's kind of hard to understand because we live in the moment. We live in the moment, and that is what we experience. And even though we are kind of going through the transition of time, as we are going through the transition of time, we're experiencing it. So in essence, in the fourth dimension, we are kind of like something on a movie reel. So here's, here's some boxes, and this is us, who are supposed to be cubes. So what happens is we experience one moment at, the, at a time. We only experience this moment. We really don't really understand the past, and we really don't understand the future. We're only technically in the moment. But from a fourth dimensional perception, they would see us, like let's just say this was me right here in the yellow cube. They would technically see me right there, you know, my consciousness is right there in the moment thinking about it. But then they can see how I'm going to go in the future and they're going to go, go ahead and see how I react in the past. And I know that's a really complicated concept to understand, but when you really analyze it, you realize that we would look something like this. A goldfish. Now, when you look at this goldfish here, just to get put more dimensions to it, I'm going to say all these goldfish is, is basically you and I. And then what happens is we're going to the forward, and then we're also there is a past. But what happens is when a four dimensional person is looking at us, we don't look like one thing. We actually have an energy body that's connected to all of us, like this green line. Obviously, the green line will go ahead into the future and go into the back, but basically from the beginning to the end, we have like this concept of a green line going through us that's connecting to us. So even though we may seem separated based on the film that we have, when you look at the bigger picture, we would probably look like an elongated uh, snake form, and therefore all those snake forms are connecting to each other. But we don't realize it because we're kind of chopped up in time, and we only feel like that my past and my future doesn't really have a connection to each other. But this is how they would look like. So they can see, oh, I can see what you did in the past, and I can kind of see what you're doing in the future, and I can kind of see this long connection between all your past and future. And that's why when they talk about the fourth dimension, they say it's more concept of time because with time you can kind of see the past and the future in reality we don't look separated as like a box or as a dot we look more like um, a concept of a long line now I know that's going to be kind of hard to upset especially because we're third dimensional but let me go, go ahead and give you how this how we would um, give you another analogy from the opposite end so here you see an apple so as you can see with this apple, you see it has width, height, and it has it has width, height, length, and then you can see that there's a width to the apple, which is dimensions. Um, 
But how would this apple appear on the second dimension? So when you realize that, you realize that we have to kind of like look at the concept of chopping the apples up because what happens is as you press down this third dimensional concept into a pieces of paper, it's not going to have width to it. It's just going to be width and height, which will just be, which would just come through in like little chops of pieces of paper. So technically, if there is a flat land of, let's just say, a pieces of paper, or something on two dimensional, and here's how the apple looks like on a third dimension, but we can see it. As you were to press this orifice third dimensional apple was to visit a two dimensional space, all the two dimensional space would see is just a whole bunch of circles. So they'll just see the circle again, small, big, 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 and then small, and then probably see some green at the end because those are the leaves. Now, when you look at that, you would be like, wow, a circle visited me. <laughs> but really what that circle is, is actually an apple. And the apple would kind of look similar to an orange. The only thing would be difference is color. It, any, a sphere would look something like this. Now, if they were intelligent and they try to hypothesize how we try to hypothesize it by the fourth dimension, the, this is how they would hypothesize in on the bottom where they're kind of look like they're stacked, stacked up on each other. It says how the second dimension would understand the 3D in theory. So they wouldn't really see how it looks like in 3D, but what they would do is they would try to take these little circles, stack them up on each other and say, technically, if you just imagine that there was an even flow between all this, this is how the second dimension looks. And that is how they would perceive it. So you can see, like, from the dimensions, even from the third dimension, we can see clearly that it's an apple based on its width, height, and length. But on the 2D dimensions, they would just see it as a big circle coming in and a big circle coming out. Now, to go ahead and illustrate this further, uh, this point a little bit further, I have here a concept of someone's... Um, uh, which we should call their hands. And what they have here is, let's just say you were to put someone's hand on a, on a piece of paper where some where the two-dimensional beings are. If you put your fingers there and not your palm, they would see you as, let's see, one, two, three, four, five dots. And technically those four dot those four dots or five dots are all connected to the one being because you haven't pushed down all of your compression of your hand or actually pushed your whole face, they don't understand that you're much bigger than those dots. So technically they can theorize that either one, you you haven't pushed your whole body in, so they can think that you're as big as the dots, but you're not showing yourself. Or they can conceptualize that there's actually one, two, three, four, five different beings visiting them from the third dimension. So when you realize that, you realize the perception from dimensions can, va can be vastly different than their perception because they can't really perceive the dimensions. Because even if you were to tell someone t on the second dimension, those are just five fingerprints of someone on the third dimension, they won't really understand that unless you try to push your whole body through. And even that would be like, what the heck is this? Because it wouldn't, they would have to like take the slices of the impressions and try to line them up. And that would be a very, in, um, an interesting feat to do, never to say nevertheless. So when you realize that, you realize that this whole concept of the fourth, third dimension is interesting, and that's why when you understand they see us as time, they don't really just see the separation, they see the connection, they see how everything's connected. But, but, then, it, but then the question is, comes in, is time really the fourth dimension? We're not sure yet based on physic, physics. Well, the fourth dimension is not like the first, second, and third dimension, which is associated with space. Because remember, the first, second, and third dimension was associated with length, width, and um, height. But the fourth dimension is now dealing with time. And realize that time is something we really don't understand yet. So when they say the, the fourth dimension is time, that's more trying to conceptualize on a third dimensional perception the concept of being able to look at that wavily length or energy of snake form that we can actually look like on the, on the fourth dimension. That's connecting. And what happened is says the more we learn about space time and general relativity, gravity, quantum entanglement, and M theory is hard to accept that the fourth dimension is time. Not saying there is such thing, but we 
just have to haven't fully understood time yet. So yeah, we're right now in a third dimensional perception because remember now we're acting like the second dimensional beings. We're trying to theory theorize or shot or understand the fourth dimension on a third dimensional perception. So when you realize that, we said we understand the concept of time, however, time may be different from the fourth dimension. Because if they can see us like a snake, that means they should also be able to see multitudes. But then um, you have to realize that, you know, he says time, as we know it, or how we define it, is an illusion, but it's based on a third dimensional perception. So technically, how our past and our future seems all separated is also an illusion. But technically, if you see it from a four dimension, or if you saw it, you would see that we're all connected. But right now, because we don't have the perception to understand that connection as of this one elongated um, rep representation of ourselves, it all seems like we're all separated separated like a movie film. So until you can understand that time is not an illusion and as long as you're in the third dimension and you're working and you're aging, then time is definitely not an illusion. It's something that's, um, that's real. So I have here, um, the circle is a symbol of infinite where the end is in the beginning and the beginning is the end. The alchemists sum this up as the name Azoth, a secret substance, the hermetic or fluid light. The name Azoth is composed of the first and last letters in the three languages, A to Z in Latin, Alpha and, and Omega in Greek, and Alf and Tev in Hebrew. So once you understand esotericism and things of that nature, you'll understand that sometimes you always talk about time is basically a circle. And what's, what it is is basically a concept of just keep going in a routine, and therefore, um, sometimes you can look at time as an, as an affinity. And also, when you're dealing with time, we have to realize, too, that time, we always, right now, can look at it going forward, but for the most part, people don't understand how to go backwards. So, if... Um, so because we, we only understand time going linear, then we don't really understand time because when you think of the concept of, like, let's just say, um, when, you, when you're dealing with the concept of, let's just say, uh, space-time, you understand that basically space is kind of like, you know, based on Einstein, space space is kind of like a blanket. And if you put something on that space-time, it can make that blanket seem heavier based on the gravitational pull and therefore if something is flying past a planet that has a long gravitational pull or a heavy mass to it, it can slow down anything flying by it. So therefore, if something is flying on the blanket that's next to a heavy planet like Jupiter versus flying something like Earth, it can affect the time that someone travels to a destination. And also when you think of um, things like the Big Bang Theory, you must realize that if we are, if there was a Big Bang and everything started expanding from the Big Bang, that means out in space because there's no gravity, everything would have to go at a constant speed until it hit something else. And that constant speed at the same rate continuously would be what they call inertia. And inertia just keeps going, keeps going, and keeps going and not stopping. So, if time is a, a concept that just keeps moving based on inertia, that means everything should be constant. But, if you understand quantum physics and things of that nature, they kind of basically got to the concept of understanding that the accelerating universe is the observation, the, well basically this concept of the accelerating universe, which is the observation that the universe appears to be expanding at an increasing rate. So if the universe is starting to accelerate as opposed to just being constant, then you know that there's definitely something um, happening with the whole shape of the universe. Now this is going beyond our perception. Because realize that if there is a Big Bang Theory, that means if something was to explode, it would finally hit a rhythm and will just go at inertia, which is consistently going at one speed, until some, it hits something. But because I realize the universe is starting to accelerate, then there has to be an interesting shape to the universe where there's curvatures to make it accelerate. So that's when you have things like the donut hole theory of the universe. The donut hole theory of the universe is 
basically a, a description of the shape of the universe is, would be, let's just say, in the third dimension of the Taurus. Uh, and basically, this is how it looks like. So they're saying, basically, you know, we're used to this whole one thing, but we think it's a curvature to it, so therefore when the universe goes goes to a certain curvature, it starts to accelerate. And that's why there's non inertia so it's kind of like a bubble within a bubble, if that makes sense. So it will look something like this. And then, that kind of goes to the concept with infinite. If the universe is infinite, that means everything would never die out. So here I have a picture of a star. And here's the star system, and here's all the planets and all the stars. If everything is infinite, that means every single star that ever existed would infinitely basically light up. That every star, every planet, because it's inf it could infinitely glow and grow at a constant rate. And that means our night sky should be a lot more brighter than this. Because every, every star would be infinite, every planet in it, um, would be infinite. That means every light that was ever in the sky should be infinitely shining bright and never existing because if it stops that means it's finite and a whole sky should be lit, lit up like almost like daylight but because we see stars burn out and because we see that planets planetaries and um, black holes and things expire that means we know that things are finite so when things are finite then we know that definitely there has to be, a, the, our universe has to be kind of finite in the same way. That means we know that our sun will end and then therefore um, everything must, is, is only limited in experience. So when you understand that, then you know that time is infinite. It's finite as well to a certain extent. Now to go into this concept of uh, those who understand um, here is a, basically an article talking about the universe has finite lifespans based on the higgs boseville calculations. And this is basically what they suggest. So if you know that time is not linear and um, the universe is finite, then we don't really understand time because that basically says time has an expiration date. So when we understand that, that then if we were to base the fourth dimension strictly on time, that means fourth dimension will cease to exist and everything below or up it will basically not be able to be built up on each other because usually these have to be foundations that build up on each other. So that definitely gives us something to think about and reanalyzing what we think the fourth dimension is. I heard the concept that the fourth dimension is not really time but it just looks at the durations or the connectionness to the third dimension. So it's more like durations it can look at the past and the duration of the future, but then you have to look at this as how would you ex explain that in the multi-universe? Now, before I go to the multi-universe, you guys have to understand that too, when you're dealing with quantum mechanics, you're also dealing with quantum entanglement. And basically, when you're talking about entanglements, you're talking about how something in the future or the past could affect something that doesn't seem like it's related. Now realize, this will also validate the concept that we're more on the fourth dimension, where we look like more like wavily lines that's connecting our past, our future, and it's also going to connect us to alternative futures in a different a different universe or something that's separated from us. Now we can't understand that because from a third dimensional perception, we just see like um, time capsules of the moments like flashing before our eyes. But on a fourth dimensional perception, they should be able to see our long aided bodies and the, the the experience we choose to decide the elongated body of the the um, dimensions that we don't did we say we decided not to see so they can see all these perceptions or potentials we had and how we chose to um, go through it but when you understand the concept of entanglement you would understand that entanglement may basically means you can make change to a photons in one point in space and time and it can affect something on a total different level of a space of time and though Though this is interesting to understand is because it could say that time is not, you know, time is basically relative to the present moment. That means I can change something in my present moment and affect something in time and space and a totally different unrelated concept. But then this will also validate the concept of Kabbalion as above, so below. So even though I affect something down here, that doesn't seem like it has no connection to this upper world, it definitely has, a, there could be um, an entanglement between the lower and the upper worlds based on the decisions that we have here. 
you can also compare this to the um, butterfly effect where just something like a flap of a butterfly uh, could create a tornado somewhere else based on the connectionness of it all. But I think what happens is when you understand that, you would understand more that there is a connection to everything, but we don't see it because we're living in this um, slip of time space where everything seems separated, but in the fourth dimension and maybe in the higher dimensions of fifth dimensions, they see everything as lines of freeways connecting. Kind of like when you're on the freeway, you don't realize that um, there's these little lines connecting to everything, but when you look on top, you can see like the veins or even our human body like when you think of our veins um, a cell probably doesn't think it's connected to a stream of blood vessels but when you look at it from the upper world you can see that there's like strings of blood vessels right so that's basically how it is but when you understand that the concept of quantum entanglement is actually a concept where you can affect things from different space and time then you realize that the fourth dimension is something that we still have to analyze in regards to complete I'm saying it's just time. Here's a quick article where um, they basically did their first quantum entanglement photons through space and time. It's a real good article if you guys are interested in that. So, you know, I kind of talked also about there's different types of worlds out there. And that's when you get into the many worlds interpretation. And it's basically something that you deal with quantum mechanics. And it's just basically talking about how we can have multiple different person realities out there and that these realities, even though we didn't choose to choose them, that they're still out there. So in essence, look at it as like we're in one of these boxes here on a film strip and we're, because we're in third dimension, we can only experience a box at a time. But on the fourth dimension and higher, they would probably see one strip would kind of be like your whole um, body through the... Um, the life you chose to choose based on your consciousness, but then there's all these different type of parallel lives that you can actually jump into or your body can actually break off into. So when you realize that, you realize that, yeah, there is us, we're stuck in one cube of a third dimensional reality that's connected to the future and the past, but at the same time, there's parallel ones that connects to it. So it would probably look something like this. So here I highlighted a red cube, which is something that we can experience right now, but in reality, our bodies is like these long, sliverly snakes or just this long line of past, future, and present, which the fourth dimension can see. But then there's all multitudes of graphs. And then it kind of, this is when it starts to get into the concept of sacred geometry. So when you realize that, you realize that, you know, we are just like the second perception. We are caught up in the illusion of, of time and a fourth dimension. So it's really hard to perceive a fourth dimension. But if you see the things from fourth dimension, you can see things through a snaky, wavy line that connects everything. So um, I have here, many parallel universes are part of the quantum wave function where we are currently in based on made on the different choices in the multiverse. You know, in other universes, for example, we could have not been alive, could have passed. Some believe that these dimensional outcomes are actually fourth, uh, fifth dimensional twists and turns and actually are in, are just as real as our dimensional perception of observer. Some people even believe that the string theory, string theory is a connection of the third and the seventh dimension. Also, you know, when I say the fourth and fifth, third dimen fifth dimension, people can say there's like a, um, peop you know, we're working on here in this film, and then there could be people on the fourth or fifth dimension trying to like help us or manipulate us, depending on perception you want to see it. But even if they could see our bodies from the past and future of as a connection us of this long like snake like feel. They could also see through us, so they can actually see our dimension, our thoughts, what is creating us to go one way, what is creating us to go in a different way. So when you realize, you realize that it's a lot more complicated and it's, um, it, it's a lot more thought-provoking to see things from a fourth-dimensional perception. And right now, because we're in the third-dimensional perception, we kind of just see things, you know, um, as as basically third dimensional but once 
to, to consider time an illusion to the concept of being that way, you kind of have to transcend the third dimension. And if at that time you, if you, if you, if the rules are still affecting you in the third dimension, then that means the rules, then we are part of the program, we're part of the illusion. And to see things from a fourth dimension is really to see things more. Um, vast, just like a third dimension reality is so much different from a second dimensional reality, just like the second dimension reality is so much different from the one um, um, dimensional reality. So like in the second dimension reality, they can actually draw houses. In the one dimensional, they can just only draw lines. So, you know what I mean? It just, it's, it's interesting to when you look at it from that perspective. But um, I, I kind of went into a lot of um, different concepts ahead of things I want to share. But that was my quick video about the fourth and fifth, fourth, um, first, second, and third dimension. I hope you guys liked it. I hope it made you guys see things from a different perspective. And I'll see you in my next video.